it means erasure. He's a symbol at genocide. It's a, a celebration of colonization, manifest destiny. A lot of people don't want to hear the truth, so that's why they keep, kind of keep sticking with Columbus Day. And it's the arrogance of celebrating this day. So many people still believe Columbus discovered America, and that was a wonderful thing. So it's an awakening. It's time to wake up. Hi, I'm Jane Wells, and on this Indigenous Peoples Day, I am absolutely delighted and honoured to welcome Dawn Bjorka and Jaylee Fimbers. Um, Dawn is a Lakota, um, and Jaylee Fimbers is from the MHA Nation. Um, and I'd like to start by acknowledging that I am sitting on Pog Pogasut land, the land of the Golden Hill tribe of the Pogasut Nation. Um, Dawn. Um, maybe you'd like to introduce yourself a bit. Hey, uh, my name is Dawn. I'm Sichangu Lakota, a Rosebud Sioux Tribe, um, enrolled member of the Rosebud Sioux Tribe, currently residing in Minnesota. I've been in Minnesota for the past 26 years. Um, have two adult children. Daughter is going to be 28 in January. Son just turned 24 last month. Um, big time golden retriever fan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shaylee. Well, happy Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, Marashi Adashi Khobash, me Mahokari Tititit Kanagats. My Indian name is Sacred Shaw. My given name is Jaylee Fimbers, and I'm of the Elkali Lodge and um, Prairie Chicken Clan of the MHA Nation. Thank you. Well, it's wonderful to have you both here on this important day. And um, I think that I'd like to think that we're beginning to see a little bit of a change and turning towards recognizing Indigenous Peoples Day rather than the uh, formerly known day that referenced an Italian colonizer. Um, would you each like to say a little bit about how you feel about this day and how you used to feel about it in this process of sort of shifting away from Columbus Day to, to Indigenous Peoples Day. Yeah, um, you know, going to school, I went to school in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, um, learned about Columbus a lot, right? Um, Columbus Hill, the ocean blue in 1492. Even back then, I never understood why we learned he discovered America, even the wording with that really was throwing me as a kid because um, I knew you, you can't really discover something that people are already on. Um, and I also didn't understand why they said he discovered America and why people keep thinking he discovered America because he never really stepped foot, at least on the continental United States. Um, and it, it's good that people are starting to, to turn and it's, it's important to have these difficult conversations. And I think too often people try to shy away from difficult conversations because strong emotions come up whenever we're having these conversations. But there's a reason why that stuff comes up. That stuff comes up to come out. Um, and so it's, it's really good now. People are starting to recognize it. Cities are starting to recognize it. Um, school districts are starting to recognize it. Uh, last year, I actually sang the Lakota flag song over the intercom at a middle school here in Rochester. Um, I don't think that's ever been done in any of the buildings. So that was a, that was a big thing. And I was really very, very honored to do that. Um, and, and both of my kids completely know that he didn't step foot on this land, so. Excellent. Shaylee, what happened? I mean, how did you understand this holiday when you were growing up? I guess I was really confused as well. Um, I kind of didn't exactly, um, I don't know, I guess, like she said, I was, I was confused too, and I didn't 
I didn't really know why they they said that he discovered it when I put stories on my life of you know us being here mm -hmm. and, and our creation stories and I don't know it was just really um, deceiving and as I got older um, I guess it's I suppose it sparked a lot of rage and like anger and even more confusion but. Um, I'm happy to see that people are trying to abolish this day and make it Indigenous People's Day. Like, yeah, okay, cool. We're trying to, you know, start the process of learning history in a more truthful and accurate way. Um, I mean, especially, I think, the history of, um, you know, the colonization of this country. Obviously, there's been a lot happening. Um, in this country overall, um, in this moment in time. But I wanted to talk to both of you a little bit about, um, about language and about the relearning of your native languages. Um, because I know you're both students of, of your language. And it seems to me that language is an important part of cultural regeneration and recognizing the cultures that were here before. So would you talk to us a little bit about your language programs and acquisition and what it means to you? Yeah, um, one of the things I'd like to share was um, one of our guest speakers actually said something that was very profound, very profound and very simple, right? You can never not be who you are. Um, you can never not be who you are. And I think too often because of the, the history of our people, um, the boarding schools, um, pre-Indian Child Welfare Act, um, foster care system, a lot of our people and people like of my mother's generation have nothing but shame. Um, and it doesn't help when we have things like mascots portraying us as something that we're not, right? So that's doubly shame. And it doesn't help when people go to them and say, oh, you speak Indian, translate this for me. Um, I, I think that's a very, that's a big no-no. Don't ever do that to people um, because there's a lot of shame involved, right? And so part of me wanting to get this back into me, it's always there, but to, I guess to awaken it inside of me is, not only to honor my mom, but to honor my kids and honor my grandkids. Um, it's a, uh, and it's nothing to be ashamed about. Um, there's a lot of truth. A lot of our instructions are just in the language itself. Um, the words, like the syntax is completely different than English. So the things that are stressed in Lakota aren't necessarily stressed in English. So there's a lot of important lessons to be learned in the indigenous language, at least in Lakota. Mm -hmm. Jaylee, you, uh, you've been learning and studying and teaching for a, a while now, haven't you? Yeah, um, for about two years now. Been learning. Could you say something about your relationship with the with the teachers who have been teaching you? Um, you're, you're studying Hidatsa, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've I've like developed a really strong relationship with. Um, our mentor, Sally White, um, she's actually like a, a grandmother of mine that didn't really know until we started working together. So she's, she's teaching you the language and then you're teaching young people as well. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So I work in... Um, the language and culture department, and it's pretty new. It's it's two years old, and I'm a language apprentice slash um, kind of like a junior mentor because we're supposed to kind of be learning for about two years and then teaching three years rather than going back into the program as a mentor or going into the schools. But I want to spend as much time as I can with um, our mentor. Mm -hmm. um, as much as I can because I don't think you ever stop learning. Yeah. Do you feel that when you speak the language and you hear it, that you it do you feel viscerally that you connect with your ancestors? Um 
definitely. Um, I always, I always think like, um, if you're indigenous and the only thing that you can think of that makes you indigenous is um, an enrollment card or benefits, then that's a problem. You know, like um, we're we're fighting to exist, and language is the biggest key factor of who we are, and it has every it has everything. It's the main source of our our um, songs and our prayers and our teachings. I, I want so badly for future generations, future generations to have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I I wanted specifically today to talk a little bit about um, about Native American athletes and to talk about um, mascots and names of football teams because we had started the petition. So I thought maybe now we'd um, reshare the video that um, Jaylee made about how she feels about mascots and then we come back and talk a little bit about that and the petition. Um, if that's okay with both of you, we'll see if we can get the video to play on cue. Uh, my name is Jaylee and I come from the MHA Nation. As an indigenous athlete, it's hurtful to see harmful stereotypes of native people used by athletic associations. We didn't overcome years of atrocious hate and genocide to continuously deal with the same thing in a different way. It's time for people to realize that this isn't okay and it's in no way, shape, or form honoring us. If you want to honor us, speak out about all of the injustice, oppression, and issues we're still facing today. Use your platform at your sporting events to help honor broken treaties and speak truth instead of creating a space where it's okay to be hateful and yell derogatory things. Using indigenous people and their culture as your mascot is simply degrading, dehumanizing, and disrespectful. So I kindly demand that as a human family, we can come together and take accountability for our actions. We are not your mascot. Thank you for listening. Great, thank you. Thank you, Jaylee, for that. Um, Dawn, what do you, what, what's your response to that? You know, um, when I was younger, I did a lot of running and I was actually pretty good at it. Um, and I identified with Billy Mills um, and I never understood why. And I still don't understand why he isn't a common name, right? Because he's the only Westerner to ever win a tenth, tenth, a gold in the 10,000 meters. It was in 1964, Tokyo, Japan. Um, and, and, the first thing we did, Jane, was um, the first video we did, we talked about um, how it's not an honor. It's, I, I don't feel honored, I feel embarrassed. Um, and if you wanna honor me, then, then you know, walk in a humble way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jaylee? Um, for sure, like, I don't feel honored whatsoever when People are, you know, throwing back some beers and have like a low bonnet on and mimicking war hooping and, and leaning and it's just, I don't think, I don't know, I don't think I've, I don't, I've never drank and I've never worn a war bonnet, you know, that's, it's crazy to see like people thinking that's all we are, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I the dehumanization is really something that I think when these teams and franchises or even high schools and college teams are thinking up names, they don't, you know, they don't seem to take responsibility for the amount of damage that they're doing and the extent of it, um, which is one of the reasons why we really did want to start this petition to try and raise some awareness um, around how how harmful those names um, and mascots can be, but to do to try and add some recognition of of stolen land into into the effort as well. Um, so, do you want us to say on this day a little bit about how you feel about about the land and and how much has been taken from you? Well, 
A lot, I, I think I think sometimes these discussions get framed as being native issues, right? And they really are native issues. But but if you really think about it, it's it's United States citizen issues. And I, I'm going to go back once again mm -hmm. to the supremacy clause of the United States Constitution. That isn't just a native constitution. That constitution applies to every single person in this country, um, and and so. If, if you want to know why parts of the Constitution are getting torn down, you only need to go back to the Supremacy Clause and realize that every single treaty has been violated and, and they're not supposed to be violated. They're supposed to be the supreme law of the land. And, and I, don't think, I don't think any Native American wants anybody to have their constitutional rights trampled upon. Um, and, and so I, I would ask that people try to keep that in mind when they're talking about treaties. Um, here in Minnesota, there's always big issues about fishing rights. Um, you know, and people are complaining about the Indians always get to go fish. Well, that's because their treaty guaranteed to do so. And it's not just, a, that is constitutionally protected. Um, so if, if we all want our rights to be protected, we really should be supporting each other and supporting those treaties and upholding those treaties. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you want your Second Amendment right, then you have to also respect all the, you know, all the treaties that have come before as well. I mean, yeah. um, there's a question here about what impact do you think it would have on native, uh, it would have to have for native land recognition before sporting events? What impact do you think it would have? What impact do you think it would have if we had some, some native land recognition around sporting if we put those two concepts together in sporting events and franchises? I think it, it can serve as an impetus. It's a door opening. Um, I, I, I don't want to see people stopping with like, oh, I did my, I did my indigenous land recognition. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm friends. We're good. Yeah. It, it's much deeper than that, although it is a starting point. Um, so I, I would hate for people to, use that as like a checkbox, like we've done that, we're good. Um, that That's your doorway, that's your opening to learning more. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to say that I do, you know, I, at three generations, I think we do recognize that there is a, you know, there's a potential for tokenism in that. But on the other hand, it is a way to start a conversation and it is a way for people to learn and to really think as they move around the country from place to place, okay, whose land am I on? Because I'm, you know, in the state of Connecticut right now, you know, our office is on Lenape land in Manhattan. So even as I take my journey back and forth, those are things that at least by acknowledging that, it's the beginning of learning, well, who were those people and what happened to them um, and where are they now, perhaps. Um, you know, really, just on the subject of sports and sort of honoring, um, you know, I think of you as an amazing um, athlete because I have seen you and filmed you running, boxing. Um, now I've seen you, you know, doing roping and stuff. So obviously, sport has had a, a huge impact on your life and on your personal journey. Would you talk a little bit about how that has has helped you find out who you are? Um. I suppose um, it made me really realize like everything that I could overcome and where all that strength comes from. And it comes from my ancestors and it comes from a place of wanting to find myself and, and really knowing who I am and identity and how it's so important and how we're living in a settler colonial system and Controlling identity is their number one, their number one um, kind of way of destroying us, you know, and if they have the power to control our identity, then there's no reason to acknowledge um, a bunch of invisible people that we only know as a mascot or we only see as um, all these inaccurate portrayals, you know. Um, it's about 
people not wanting to take accountability for genocide. And through sports, um, it makes me realize like just how much um, strength our people had. And yeah, I don't know. Go on. Um, um, I don't really know how to put two together. I don't know with words very well, but you know, I just um, I see it helping a lot of our youth, indigenous youth sports altogether. Like it really helps them um, dig deep and find find themselves. You know, rather rather than know um, where it comes from. Or mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Dawn, do you, do you want to follow up with that a bit? I am a big sports fan. We're all sports fans. Um, I love sports. I think there's so much you can learn from playing sports and even just watching sports. Um, playing, you learn teamwork. Um, you learn, if, if you're a good sports person, you learn respect. Um, and specifically, I want to talk about, well, all sports involve running, right? But, but when we run, our feet touch the earth. Um, and I was told once that the reason we're sick or we're, we're, we're ill a lot um, is we don't let our feet touch the earth enough. Um, so if you can get out there and walk in the grass and your bare feet do so, I think we all need to kind of humble ourselves a little bit. Cool. Well, that doesn't speak very well to having AstroTurf on uh, football fields, does it? And that uh, explains why they're so out of touch with the sports mascot issue because yeah. they're not in touch with the earth, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think that, you know, we have this petition to, um, to, you know, ask some of these sports teams, specifically the Washington football team, to um, think about, you know, changing their names and honoring the land on which they stand um, or they've built their stadiums. But I think that the question of what, how they choose to name their team is, you know, I was looking at some of the, you know, the the most likely names that they, that they want to have. I don't actually, I don't consider it to be an issue around having anything to do with honoring Native Americans or um, stolen land or any of the issues that we were talking about on Indigenous People's Day at all. But I wonder if you if you agree with me about that. I mean, I think it's sort of like if they stop with the mascots and they pick another name, that's their issue. You know, I think if they really want to honor us, then they could shed light on the, the broken treaties. Mm -hmm. That's how they can honor us. Um, and once again, just be a good human being. Um, don't stop. Like I said, all of this this stuff is a door, right? It's a door, it's an entrance. And, and we all feel shame. I'm gonna go back to when I was talking about the language, all of that was stripped away, right? Through boarding schools and through foster care. So we're trying to get it back. And there are some people who feel really shameful for not knowing it. Um, and that that's a universal feeling, right? You could feel shame for not understanding these issues or not seeing it from our eyes. Um, but, but I would ask everybody to feel that, to allow themselves to feel it, because the only way you're going to get out of it is to feel it and to move past that once you feel it. Um, so if, if they, if the fans, and I'm a fan too, um, if, if, you, if you guys want to honor us, then learn and educate yourselves more. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and Jamie, you know what you, I think you said that, um, you know, that this is not a way to honor you. Are there specific ways that you would like to see honoring now? I suppose, yeah, that, um, these um, corporations using their platform, I guess, to spread awareness, you know, about how um, it's not okay. It's dehumanizing, disrespectful, degrading, all of those things. So. 
So do you think there is greater awareness now than there was, you know, three, five, ten years ago? Yeah, for sure. I don't think um, any of these fans, they didn't take into consideration that it might be hurting people because there's nobody complaining. Mm -hmm. Then you know, people are finally not only, you know, not only Native people, but a lot of non-Native people as well coming together and speaking out. So it's becoming, it's becoming more of an issue. Good. That's what we hope for. Okay. Well, any final closing thoughts that you would like to share uh, today? I would uh, ask everybody to learn a little bit more. And, and if you're feeling instead of getting defensive because that's it like if there's something we're unsure of we automatically get defensive um i would ask everybody to put their guard down because the only way we're going to move forward is if we put our guards down and if we feel um if we're constantly deflecting and if we're constantly saying you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong i'm going to beg to differ and i'm going to say once again that we, we all need to be helping each other out. And this isn't just a Native American issue. Um, it's, it's, this issue affects this entire country. Um, so it, it's not just the Native rights, it's, it's an American rights issue because that it's fundamental core. Um, I believe I said this before, if our own government isn't honoring our treaties, then I mean, everybody's taking the lead from the government, right? So Washington or whoever can call their team whatever they want because our own government isn't even acknowledging us and the promises they, they made to us that were written into the Constitution. So I would just say educate, 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 learn. Thank you. Yeah. Really? For sure. Um, like she said, educating yourself and taking accountability, like non-native, native people, um, taking accountability for learning your language and not standing by and letting um, genocide and some like continuously happen in all of these different forms. And um, yeah, like if you, if you can um, just, even even prayer, taking the time to to pray, you know, about um, a hurt people, you know, a lot of hurt indigenous people, and um, being more considerate and compassionate. So. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you both for for sort of sharing your truth and your wisdom with us and um, the call for for humility and compassion and, um, and you know acknowledging how insidious a, a, a role shame does play it's very hard i mean i think it's hard for people to understand how much shame others experience and we all need to speak about that ourselves i think for our own truth to show that so um as always i do feel you know honored to have you here and to talk to us about this and um i have to say that i would love it if anybody who's listening would sign the petition because a petition is just another way to raise awareness to draw attention and to ask people to to think differently about what honoring means um and you know i'm a huge fan of both of yours and um, thank you.